didn't give it enough uh, enough time. And of course, enough energy. It's going to come down to some absolute key turns. If B-Strings are live, how many cards can Lucas draw? How many B-Strings is he able to find? That's still like the golden rule for the Cephalon GX. It's not a huge surprise um, that that's still like the focal point of the archetype B-String. We've seen how popular it's been in all sorts of other builds this weekend, but the Cephalon GX is still one of the best users of that card. And of course, the Cephalon GX is not on its own, right? It, it is paired with, uh, with just about the best partner you can have in Naganadel right there. Uh, Naganadel is just the perfect uh, combination right here with uh, with Lacephalon GX as it allows you to just keep these energy coming. And as long as you can do that, you're going to be in fantastic shape whenever you have to take, you know, multiple knockouts one after the other. And there there's we go. Lucas Guso <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, we get an update. Uh, we can see Lucas now. Um, in 2019, he got a top 16 in the recent special event in Campinas, and now he is also representing the Blacephalon GX deck. You can see that Stinger GX is one of the four cards that he's chosen to put on the slide here, and um, that's one of the reasons why he's into top four now, because that Stinger GX really helped out against Andre. Yeah, and uh, you got to see two different Naganadel GXs right there. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to mention before we get into uh, his opponent's slide is I love seeing when these uh, accomplishments are so empty, right? Like, it really just shows just how important this result is for these players as they're just now starting to break through into the upper echelon of Pokemon. And as I alluded to earlier, Brian, with that world's top 32, a few decent placements, top 32 in OCIC as well as the EUIC, all in 2019. So he's definitely come on in leaps and bounds in the last two, sure. uh, two years or so, I would say. Um, he's testing with some of the best players uh, from the Netherlands, his native country, and um, he's learning a lot from them and learning really quickly, which is really exciting to see. What an insane amount of results, by the way, at the international level. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely consistent, and that just means that you can basically expect to see him not only in day two, but at the top tables at the end of day two. And that's just such an accomplishment to have all on its own, right? Despite, you know, not having broken through into the top eight until just now. Yeah, it's kind of like an unsung hero kind of thing where you keep going and going and going and keep making those placements that inevitably there'll be a tournament where the right side of luck is on you for like just one or two rounds that weren't there in previous uh, tournaments. And that's the only thing you need to be able to jump at the chance of making top eight and going even further this time around as we're going to start seeing some prize cards get laid out, starting off with the uh, Lucas's Blacephalon uh, six cards there. Nothing too detrimental to him. Stinger's not a big card here. As we're going to see Lucas now, the Solgaleo can Solgaleo sometimes be a little GX, bit awkward. Yeah. Uh, let's also see the Naganadel. The Solgaleo GX yeah. plays. It looks like it's... Just the one copy yeah. there, so that's a little bit awkward. One thing we also should note, not super certain if Brian is aware of some of the changes that Lucas has in his deck list, but he's actually playing Mallow and Lana in here, and that could be a great way that he could try and play around uh, Brian trying to avoid B-Strings. So that's a little interaction that we'll have to watch out for across this series. Okay, so we are getting ready to begin this first game in the top four. Remember, it is Lucas Gusso, Brazil's last remaining player against Brian DeVry here. It is going to be a matchup that is reminiscent of the World Championships, just adding in these new cards from Cosmic Eclipse wherever possible. Will they prove to uh, give Blacephalon GX its victory, or will we see Mewtwo rise? Lucas kicking things off with a Heat Factory, I believe. He also used a Poke Gear there. I didn't, don't think he got the ideal target here, so he's going to be firing off another one hoping to find maybe a Cynthia, because I don't think he has any live targets for this welder that's currently in his hand. Yeah, and I think I see a welder in the top. Oh, there's a Cynthia it, also. Oh, there's a Cynthia. He's looking good now. I think uh, really um, to sort of complete the turn, you want to find yourself a couple Poipole, ideally, and getting a manual attachment. That's also going to be helpful for sure. Yeah, but that's the end of your supporters here, so you're going to be hoping to have a lot of help here from the Cynthia. You're going to be shuffling in your hand, drawing in six new ones, but... You need the poibles. They yeah. they're the, they're an absolutely crucial piece of this puzzle, and you want them as soon as possible because they still have to evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's a lot of pressure on this uh, on the six card hand from uh, from Lucas. Yeah, and Lucas, it's a really good point as well you make because he only plays one Dedenne GX. He's opting for the heavier Naganadel GX sort of draw engine. He plays two Dragon type uh, Naganadel GX and uh, that one Stinger. So only one space for. Um, the Dene, he doesn't have any access to the Dene either. His turn's oh, done. Oh, man, it's over. Yeah, he just attaches the fire energy and passes the turn. Does Lucas, and now Brian gets to start his first turn of the game. Kicking right away. The heat factory heat himself factory, there. Drawing three. 
looks like he's also <laughs> stumbled upon not the best of hands here. He might also be looking to Stellar Wish to get himself into a better spot. Yeah, well, at least he has access to Stellar Wishes. First of all, we see the Giant mm -hmm. Hearth maybe going to be thinning the deck down a little bit before uh, before he decides to Stellar Wish. Yeah, he's also got Switch in hand as well, so he, there's a second Jirachi there. So he'll have a couple of bites of the cherry as he's going to first go for the Giant Hearth, throwing away one of those GX Pokemon, uh, starting off with the Greninja GX that hits the discard pile. Um, and he's going to go ahead and fish out two Fire Energies to improve the odds of Stellar Wish kicking uh, things off. He's going to start looking through to see his prize cards. I'm sure he won't be too pleased that Solgaleo's um, in there. It's one of those cards that some U2 players opt to even play two copies exactly. of just, to, just yes. to safeguard you from this sort of thing. Um, so it's going to force Brian to play slightly differently, I think, here. So what's the ideal uh, trainer card that, uh, that we can see from Stellar Wish? Well, I still think it's Welder. I'm pretty sure he's got uh, Mewtwo's in his hand here. So I think any welder you're pretty pleased with. You want to be accessing your powerful attacks. And when you don't have Sogolo available to you, sometimes well, you do have like to go Well, it looks like we find a welder, by the way. Yep. Uh, that's, uh, like I said, it's pretty much the best thing. It's still a focal point of both players' lists, and um, it just allows you to access all sorts of attacks. So definitely a good pickup uh, from Brian here. Yes, it is. Uh, indeed, a huge pickup here is the welder. You were not wrong. There is definitely a Mewtwo and Mew tag team in his hand. Now on the bench, and now there's two fires on it as the Welder draws oh, wow. three cards, but also attaches two fires without using your uh, activation for the turn. Now, did he draw additional... He's got himself to Dene GX, and look how many Pokemon are in his hand. This is ideal. He's going to be able to get that free retreat from the escape board, get one more Stellar Wish in before um, using that switch, probably going back into the Mewtwo, or if he wants to play a bit more defensively, he could go ahead and grab... Or like just switch back into his escape board Jirachi as well. That's also an option. And he can just Dede change away a bunch of these Pokemon to give himself all the options to attack with. He could even be going for a switch attack, uh, sorry, a switch play, manual attach into his Mewtwo and go for that turn one double blaze GX and really put Lucas on the clocks, sort of smelling that uh, Lucas had a pretty poor start. If only he had access to that Solgaleo there. I mean, I think he's just going to try and put Lucas all in straight away here. I think this is just what you do. It is a switch When you there. don't have Solgaleo available, you just got to try and put the clock as short as possible. You're going to see, look how many Does Pokemon go into the discard pile. Does he find a fire energy? There it is. There's that fire energy. You were not wrong. Also he Rainbow. decides to go for it. Definitely a calculated risk, but a great one. Now, Rainbow opens Rainbow doors energy. for all sorts of attacks now. Megalopony and Jigglypuff if he wants to try and set up some damage instead. This also uh, gets the knockout without using the GX attack, of course. Jumping Balloon, doing 60 plus 60 more for each Pokemon uh, GX and EX in play. So Lucas is on a huge clock here, and all he's got is Welder. That's already two prizes on the first turn of the game here for Brian. Now Lucas plays a Welder, does get some Fire Energies onto this Blacephalon GX, but with no benched Pokemon. I don't think you can draw any more cards here either. I think... He's in horrible, a horrible spot. He can Mysterious Treasure just to find himself a Poipole to not lose the game. But, you know, Brian's already got, like, guaranteed knockout to take Lucas off B-String because he's put that Double Blaze um, Reshiram and Charizard into his discard pile already. Yeah, I'd so say... So even though Lucas can use a reset stamp here, I mean, the game's already just been put on such a, such a short clock here by Brian being so aggressive with a fantastic turn one. Yeah, uh, you say not lose the game. I would use air quotes there because yeah. the truth is... <laughs> Instantly, I mean. Yes, despite your, uh, you not being wrong there, um, it's really just delaying the inevitable. Uh, it, it really does seem like, given this start from Brian and given the start from Lucas too, there's just too much of a discrepancy in, we're gonna the, see uh, the, bursting burn. in the power there. And instead, all we're, all we're able to see is a bursting, uh, well, uh, bursting burn there from Brian's already Lucas. got a switch in hand. This is not going to be a problem for him at all. He's just storming through here. As soon as Brian clears the path of B-String, he's got to be feeling good about this. This There's is just this is huge. That's we may even end. see a concede from Lucas, to be honest. I think he's in such a such a poor spot here. Mewtwo and Mew no longer confused. Jirachi Brian now eight. debating what else he can do. Like, really, at this point, all he wants to do is remove all bad draws out. That's all he needs to do. Remove every bad draw that's remaining in your deck because. You know, something wacky has to happen for you not to win here. It's got to be like a combination of horrible bursting burns and you missing a bunch of switching outs to close the game at this point because Brian is miles ahead. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I think I would just try to avoid getting, being too vulnerable to a reset stamp if possible. For sure. I think that that's my main the concern at that point. The weak energy is really good here as well. But I mean, geez, man, there's just so much. Look at this. It's just amazing So for much Brian. damage output out of Brian from the beginning. I mean, this was just an explosive start if I've ever seen one. 
really, really punishing Lucas's sub-optimal Cynthia. This could be the fastest top four match <laughs> of all time. Well, I wouldn't write Lucas off just yet. I still think uh, the matchup is pretty even, uh, but it's just the contrast of Brian getting the Stone Cold best hands possible and Lucas getting the Stone Cold worst hands possible, pretty much. About as close as you can get, that's for sure. Now, Lucas behind on in every possible way mm -hmm. and about to be behind even further in the prize race as there's two more prizes taken here for Brian. Brian down to strike. two prizes remaining. Lucas still has six left. Only a poi pull in play. <laughs> now two of them. Naganadel the GX though. stamp back down to two. And Naganadel's here. Cynthia for a fresh six. But again, he's fighting from behind. He needs a lot to even consider a way back into this game. I feel like it's going to be more bursting burns that sort of buys him time here because he's going to have to slowly develop a bunch of energy cards. I don't see any other way. Yeah, the truth is that, I mean, although Lucas had about as powerful a turn right now as, as he can have so far, there's just, I mean, you see the beast ring. That's just insult to injury, right? I mean, there's not much you can really do here. Also, because there's the Megalopony and Jigglypuff, Brian could just pay retreat out of his Mewtwo as long as the giant hearth stays in play. He's pretty much got it locked up for Megalopony and Jigglypuff to knock out Ablecephalon GX, so even um, like Burning Confusion plays don't work. I, I, there's not really much of a path here, <laughs> I'm honest. Yeah, unfortunately for Lucas, really, he's had both Blacephalon GXs knocked out. I mean, the thing about Blacephalon GX is, um, first of all, it's a GX Pokemon, so it's very vulnerable to Megalopony, but uh, the truth is it's just it's, it has a very vulnerable amount of hit points. Ultra Space bouncing the Giant Hearth means that uh, Brian has to have the energy in hand, but I'm pretty sure he does have a Psychic Energy. So Luke is doing all he can here, um, but unfortunately Brian's uh, got the answers currently because he was so locked up at this point. You got it, LGX retreats. You've got to respect Revoke. what Luke's is doing. He's, he's found the only way he can win, but Brian's already got a Psychic Energy in hand, so that's probably going to be the conclusion uh, of this first game here. He's just going to Mallow and Lana, and Lana. Go back straight into the Mewtwo. And a very quick game one concluded there. Brian way ahead. Yeah, Mallow and Lana enough to, uh, again, cure the confusion one more time. And that was a very quick game uh, in favor of Brian here. Brian just honestly full steam ahead. At no point was Brian ever slowed down or anything like that. But turn one was a, a <laughs> knockout against the Blacephalon GX. Yeah, uh, like that's the kind of risk you have to take sometimes against Blacephalon. Like maybe your opponent's hand is bad and just has nothing. Maybe their hand is not bad and it's just full of B-strings and then they just go wild on you. Sure. But all you can do really is say, hey, my opponent didn't get any poi poles down. His setup was not ideal at all. He didn't play a single card after that Cynthia other than like a Fire Energy, I think it was. So, I mean, you just have to just go sometimes and hope Especially when your Solgaleo is prized, I feel like you could only take the aggressive route there because you couldn't really um, try and set up multiple Mewtwo's and stamp your opponent down. You could only ever go for this route. So Brian, um, based on his prize cards alone, had to go all in from the off, and it definitely paid off. It was the perfect storm of going second so you get to attack first mm -hmm. and also seeing that your opponent didn't have poi pulls in play. Yeah. When you see all of these things, you feel pretty all right. Like, you feel like, yes, I mean, of course, this can be punished really badly, but what are the odds that it gets punished? Like, he needs to have yeah. multiple B-strings, really. Yeah, when there are poi poles, it means not only they can have charge-ups, which makes them need less B-strings sometimes and right. less uh, welders, but it also can mean the dragon type, the GX Naganadel, which gives people more sort of pushing opportunities to find those outs in the first place. So without any of them in sight, you can feel pretty good about your chances that the Mewtwo is going to um, sort of at least be out of range of a crazy turn from the Blacephalon. Can we expect to see a similar outcome in Game 2? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, Lucas, like we said, had a very, very rough start. Um, so I think it can only get better for him <laughs> at this point, to be yeah, honest. It looks like it already has, by the way. Yeah, some good prize cards. A couple of interesting attackers in there. Most importantly, the Megalopony and Jigglypuff, just that three energy attacker, so easily able to knock out the Cephalons just by the nature of Lucas's build. He just has to put GXs down. Right. So now Lucas drawing his opening seven. Of course... Blacephalon GX, known for its uh, for its power, known for the amount of damage that it can do, uh, able to knock out these tag team GX Pokemon in a single hit, but it needs B-String for the most part, and if not, <laughs> then it definitely needs multiple Naganod Naganadels. Yeah, it's, you know, usually it's both, sometimes it's either or, as long as you get enough of either of them. Sure. Um, but usually you need it all, and uh, Brian just gave him no opportunity to find any piece of the puzzle there. 
You know, uh, for the viewers at home, uh, especially those who have not been, you know, who have not witnessed, like, for example, the World Championships or anything like that, this was really an anomaly in, in almost every sense of the word. Uh, this is not how you can just expect to see this match play out. It's more of a, a game of chess than, than this, you know, 50-yard dash that we just saw. <laughs> right, <up>. right. <laughs> It was just a perfect storm where, oh my goodness, oh, we're seeing Donadel some already. ugly prize and cards already. And still two prize cards to come. Cynthia and finally a Mysterious Treasure. So double Naganadel, Lucas, not where you yeah, want to be. He only plays three copies of the non-GX as well, so that could really hurt his sort of potential to push more energies into play and sort of squeeze himself into a spot where he needs like a lot less to close out a game. Normally, um, they're sort of used for the late game pushes rather than those early game swings. So hopefully it doesn't affect him too much as we're going to see him kicking off this second game, starting off with a Poipol. He's also got a pretty nice Mysterious Treasure. Throwing away Fire Energy is never too awkward when you can at least charge up one of them at a time. Um, so let's see what else is working on uh, in hand right now. So far, a couple of Poipols, the things he was lacking in that first game. Indeed, uh, indeed here, a different start than we saw in game one. We saw a double Blacephalon GX uh, at the end of his first turn, which obviously meant that he was vulnerable oh to things no. like Megalopunny. Instead, now we only see two Poipols, <laughs> and no. as he passes after attaching just the Fire Energy, that, uh, that gives us a lot of insight into the remainder of his hand, which just is about as bad as you can get in that situation oh. as we're forced to see Lucas pass one more time. Brian DeVries now, can he take advantage of this situation once again? Again, going second. Will he have an explosive start like he had in game one? Oh, it's... Tag call first. Yeah, it, it's so heartbreaking to see such an awful, awful start from Lucas right now. Can Brian once again get... You know, the complete opposite. Can he get himself the welder? Can he get himself into some big attacks? You're seeing already the uh, tag call there. He's already got the giant half. I don't see any um, welders in hand currently, but he does at the very least have a Dedene GX. So that could be something there. I wasn't able to see a welder, um, but there could be some other options for him to draw a few cards here because he's going to be using the half first. Yep, Normally, if you're digging for welder, you would do the Dedene first just so that you had the option on the, on the other end of the hand to have access to the welder. So, oh, he actually has it in hand. It's, the it's the welder was in hand. You're, Whoa. you're absolutely right. There's the Mewtwo and Mew already with two fire energies attached to it. We've already seen the Reshiram and Charizard GX hit the discard pile because of that giant hearth. Now we see a Jirachi get an escape board attached to it. Is and there? Is that's switch a switch. Well. So that's a big switch too. That um, that means we're going to get a stellar wish basically for free here. We're looking for Cherish Ball here. If he can get Cherish Ball, he can use a much cheaper attack. Yep, he grabs it straight away. <laughs> he can get ball. a much better attack that can just deal that 70 on Poipol really, really easily. He actually only needs to do 40 because of uh, the weakness. Um, so he's going to go ahead and get his best target, which is Sogaleo. And um, he's got a second Mewtwo in hand, I believe, as well. He took from the tag call. So he's going to be able to get, I think, four energies into play this turn and take a knockout. So, yeah, this is this is crazy. Actually, five energies because he can also manually attach. Brian, again, with a crazy good start. Brian Debris saving his luck for when it matters most. This is when you do it, man. Yeah, so there's that Dedene, Dede changing into six new cards here for Brian. Remember, we already see the, uh, the Solgaleo in the... Uh, the discard pile, which means Mewtwo and Mew will be getting a knockout against this Poipol, this poor little Poipol. And we're going to see a, a Mewtwo and Mew in the bench as well, so we're going to see him power up this Mewtwo and Mew mm -hmm. on the bench. That's going to mean four energies total at the five. end of this. Five, five. energies total. That's the You're weak not yep. yeah. <laughs> Five energies total at the end of this first turn. And Well, we see Lucas, a basic. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, again, forced to just... I mean, Maybe he can, play he can giant half to thin. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you just you're got right a giant there. half, I guess. Horrible spot for him. Giant hearth. He's going to mallow Lana to move the poi pole and try and protect it. Maybe improve some draws. Attach an energy to the bench as well. He's got to um, use, uh, I mean, he's just going to pass. Doesn't even giant hearth, really. Man, Brian's to just pass really in one great more shape. Time. Brian, one more time. Remember, here's the thing: is even if Lucas starts drawing the the right combination of cards from here on out, he's already going to be two prizes behind. That's going to mean just two GX knockouts for Brian. This is where Brian wants to be. Despite, you know, uh, Lucas giving it his best effort, it's just the deck is not cooperating with him. Absolutely, and we're going to see Brian go ahead grab that um, Dragon Naganadel of his own. Um, not quite as versatile as it is in Lucas's deck. You simply use it for the Venom shot most of the time. Um, and uh, he's going to pitch it straight away with the Giant Hearth. He has another Welder in hand, so the amount of energies coming into play from Brian is, frankly, silly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
I'm just going to uh, inject a little bit of strategy into this for you. <laughs> what, what can Brian do here to lock Lucas out of the game? Uh, is there any play that he can have that will just kind of tell uh, – take Lucas right out of this game? Does it involve like Espion and Deoxys, for example? Or Espion and Deoxys like is unfortunately in the prize card, so he can't win this turn. Otherwise, um, it like could have been on the table, perhaps. Um, so he has no digging potential for, uh, potential for that, unfortunately. That's the only good news for Lucas. Otherwise, it could well have been over. <laughs> if Brian is able to find Tell a him psychic Tell energy... Him there's good news for him. <laughs> if Brian's able to find a psychic energy here, it would mean he could access the Poipole rather than the active Blacephalon. That would have been a little bit better for him. Sure. Um, but... I don't think he's going to be picky at this point. He is way ahead. Potentially using the resetting hole on his own stadium here could limit yeah. Lucas a little bit as well. I mean, I don't know how relevant it is, but... He could have potentially just attached to the Marshadow and... Oh, no, the, the uh, Blacephalon, unfortunately, doesn't have psychic weakness. It has dark weakness. So the Mewtwo can still attack here, but uh, the Marshadow can actually take knockouts in this matchup thanks to weakness. I wonder what attack uh, Mewtwo Let's see the draw. Is he in All the right. game? Is he in the game? It doesn't seem He's like not showing it. us. He <laughs> might see a hand except No, that's a mysterious treasure. He's still in it. <laughs> He's still in it. <laughs> All right, B-String going to get discarded. B-String's alive now, don't forget. So, yeah. I mean, he can grab himself a Poipo. I almost would have liked to see him discard the B-String to get two fires from his deck with a giant heart and then discard a fire for the mysterious I don't know if I'm just nitpicking here, but... Yeah, I mean... I probably would have liked to see it too, to be honest. But here we are. Sometimes you just feel a little bit defeatist with hands like these. You can't yeah. blame him at this point. So disappointed um, to see like it go this way, especially right. you know when it's one of the biggest de uh, games you know of your tournament sort of career. Um, the previous I top mean, six teams in a special know, event, so you can just curse your luck at this point. We have to remember Lucas's um, stat page was pretty empty. Yeah. So this is a I mean, this is a big tournament for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be a, the, world, the current reigning world champion, and this is still going to be a huge match for you. But it's that much more important to you when it's your first breakthrough performance at the highest level. So to see it just kind of end the way it is here right. is just, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. It truly is. And you have to feel for Lucas. Remember, he is Brazil's last remaining player. Mm -hmm. So you have to truly feel for, uh, for the Brazilian crowd here as well. Uh, you... You would have loved to see a Brazilian player at, in the finals uh, uh, on Championship Sunday, but unfortunately it seems like the door is closing on him. And Brian's making sure that that door is not just closed, but like jammed shut pretty much <laughs> because he's just going to hide and use that Guzman and Halla. It gets him the rainbow energy, so now he can even use uh, the Naganadel to deal with three energies rather than the one in the active. So we're just going to see that big um, Naganadel take the knockout here, go down to three prizes. B-Springs are still live, but he's just wiped out a bunch of energies. Yeah. The one card, what does Lucas draw? It's Cherish Ball. <laughs> that, it's, almost, it's almost humorous at this point, oh, really. Man, it's, just, about it. <laughs> it's just enough every time. <laughs> it's, it seems like, yes, I mean, you're not, you're not out. You're, you haven't officially lost, but the, the card you draw is almost like a slap in the face, so to we speak. We need the you biggest know? swing. I mean, the fact that Brian used the rainbow energy and the poison stuck, it's one less energy that Lucas needs to take a knockout on the Mewtwo, which is good news. Um, so Lucas can technically still win this game. He just needs a crazy good to Dene. Not looking good so far. Cherish Ball, Cherish Ball with the B-String, yes. That's good. So Cherish Ball, B-String will mean at least a little explosion out of Lucas here. Okay. So he's already used, what, one B-String or two? Two B-Strings, right? Or one? Yeah, yeah two B-Strings. he's used two. So this is going to be the third. I'm not even sure if he can if he can get enough energies in play, even with that second B string. Uh, well, we'll be doing two. Oh three. yeah, he can because he can he can also get a charging up to sort of undo the retreat that he's doing. I'm pretty sure he can get there if he finds his last B string. Oh, he still needs more help. <laughs> Yep, All he right, still there does. We go. Cynthia for a fresh Cynthia. six. And remember, it's going to be the last B-String if he finds it. It's got to be like B-String. It's got to be Naganadel. It's got to be a ton of poi poles if he's going to be ever close to dealing with Brian because Brian's 100% got a ne his next knockout like lined up for him. So. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a Mewtwo with, what, four energy on it already? <laughs> That'll probably do it. Maybe five. <laughs> All right, uh, no B-String yet. I didn't welders. see the B-String. But, I mean, the there could be a Naganadel. No, no, you don't can't get the GX, right? It's got the Poipole. It's got the uh, non-GX. It's going to use that giant half. 
So he can giant half, then bump the half, then get three more draws with his own heat factory. The only non-GX Naganadel in his deck at the moment because right. the other two are prized. So he gets three more draws from his um, heat, factory? heat factory pickup. Okay, so looks like Heat Factory does replace that giant hearth. Now there is that discarded fire energy from the Another Heat Weldo. Factory. My goodness. Does he draw the B string? No, it doesn't seem like it. Serious treasure's not gonna get in there. He can charge up. Charges up. Is there like a switch effect? Nope, not that he can do here. His only real switching effects are the Mallow and Lanas that he plays. So where does he go? Feels like you've got to go for a bursting burn, but that feels mysterious a I don't, I don't even know what you can go for here. There's mysterious treasure, discarding Mallow and Lana. Honestly, he needed like everything this turn. And you know what? It wouldn't have even felt lucky for him to get it, to get it all. <laughs> it really wouldn't. Have. He's he just deserved a slice so of luck somewhere. Yeah. Right. He just he's gotten so unlucky this game. A and I I. I tend to want to. I tend to like to avoid talking about luck because the truth is, you know, it comes and it goes. There's there, that's just the, the nature of pretty much every game. Um, but in cases like these, when you're already down to the top four, and like we've just seen one player just get absolutely demolished by his own hands, you, you can't help but feel bad. Such a shame. We are going to see Lucas retreat his Naganadel. What play can you make here? He's just going to try and feed Brian a Dedene yeah. GX. Promotes Dedene. Dedene, of course, 160 hit point GX. Not the sturdiest Pokemon ever built. Um, and Brian DeVries, three prizes away from just winning this match and moving on to Championship Sunday to be well, three prizes away from being our first Championship Sunday member. So... This is this is a high pressure moment. Despite being so far ahead, you still don't want to mess it up. Mm -hmm. He's going to use the Malo Lana for the full effect here. I think he, if he can find himself a great catcher, he's got to feel like there's no real means of him losing the game. <laughs> oh no, there's there's just, I mean, matter of fact. I mean, already he's he's yeah. basically there, but let's just make sure that he can't lose. So does have a Jirachi active does have... Oh, there's already a great catcher in hand. Oh my goodness. Of course it is. <laughs> does why do I, why do I, why do I question it? And there's another one on the top of the deck, just in case. Jeez. So, uh, a reset stamp, because why not? Um, sure. The deck is just so thin for Brian. You just you assume that he's going to have access to these resources. He's thinned everything, Lucas. yeah. I mean, all the energies are basically on board rather than um, anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, it feels really, really safe. He's also going to bounce the Heat Factory. Going to see the Fire Energy attachment to the Mewtwo. Oh, are we going to see that Great Catcher? Yeah, I mean... I feel like it's really solid. There's just, just no reason why you don't Great yeah. Catcher there. Like, you already see the only threat available to your opponent is that Blacephalon GX. You 100% Great oh, Catcher. Oh, he's going to go for the uh, Nagadadel attack. Okay, he's going to knock out a Poipole here instead. I don't know why we're not seeing a Great yeah. Catcher here. Yeah, that was an interesting play. I guess it just means that there's no chance of any Stinger GX plays. I mean, to be fair, I mean, what happens here? Even if you knock out this, yeah. uh, this Mewtwo, the <laughs> other Mewtwo's got five energy on it already. It's it's ready to knock out this Blacephalon. Mm -hmm. There's really... I mean, in theory, if there's like a reset stamp now and a Great Catcher that knocks out the Bench Mewtwo, you're a little bit less safe. I guess that's the only query I have. Also, yeah, that's fair. Because you'll be left with a Mewtwo with only two energies on. When you could just great catcher and do like a flare, blit, uh, uh, flare strike instead. Well, there's ultra space now. Finding this Blacephalon GX. You really can have welds as well. Yeah. There's plays he can make. Uh, unfortunately, his hand is just you know what, multiple <laughs> it's, it's welders. It's still just welders. Yeah. yeah. It needs so Ooh, much help. Great there's catcher. a great catcher though. Can you combine it with a reset stamp? Not quite. No. I think he only plays one copy of reset stamp. So great catcher. Could at least bring up this Mewtwo with five, with so many energy on it. I believe it's five. It's going to be so painful for him. I mean, it's the play he has to make, but yeah. Otherwise, you you literally just lose. Yeah. So we go with the Great Catcher. Promote the larger Mewtwo. Yep. Pay retreat. More energetic Mewtwo. The Blacephalon <laughs> GX now comes up. It's going to be all ready six. to go. It's ready to <laughs> there fight. we go. Let's go. And down goes Mewtwo and all of its energies 
Three prizes taken here for Lucas. Is it enough? Is it enough to bring Lucas back into this game? Or will Brian be able to close it out? Jirachi now with a Stellar Wish as well available to it before we, before we even have to do anything for Brian. Brian seems to be in such great shape, but how does he close this game out? Does he have access to that Megalopunny, or is it still prized, for example? It's still prized, I'm pretty sure. He does find Psychic Energy, which is a big deal. What's his avenue for victory right now for Brian? Is it still just getting a welder? <laughs> it may be. It looks like he doesn't have any attack that can deal with a Dedenne GX. With There's a, a welder. Catcher. No energy, though. Wow. We do see, obviously, there's Stellar Wish available. If he has any more stadium cards, now's the time to find one. A giant hearth would be so timely. I'm very surprised that Brian, you can see Brian shaking his head. He's like, why did I go for the Meganadel attack? I could have gone for many other safer options. Yeah. Really? Really, that's true. All right. He's still. gonna have a count through how many energies he has left. There's a lot in the discard pile. He still feels favored to me. Um, We're gonna say, oh, he, he sees attack. the GX. Okay, oh. <laughs> that was the miraculous duo. So which he GX took his time. He used Mewtwo's attack. Of Mewtwo oh. can attack as well. <laughs> we were so focused on the discard pile <laughs> that Mewtwo's right there. Okay, the fact well, that, that he didn't do. see it straight away slowed us down a lot. <laughs> we, ass we assumed he would just know, <laughs> know his own deck, but he got there. He got there. Okay. All smiles for both it. players. Yeah. As, <laughs> you know, I, and Lucas is smiling, shaking his head. He knows that there was nothing he could have done. Literally, that game was out of his hands. That match was out of his hands.